Early in 2014, Karen Short found out that her husband John had been detained inside North Korea for spreading the gospel message about Jesus Christ. For the 15 days that he was detained, she had no contact with him. So, if you hear that story, you'd probably think she has no desire for him to go back to North Korea, let alone her go with him. But Karen thinks more about God's will than about her own safety. I would love to go. I would go with him because I believe that what he's doing is what God wants him to do. And if the Lord wants me to, to go with him and be part of it, I would go to see the situation there. Jesus never promised his followers an easy path. In fact, he told his disciples that the world would hate them. He sent them out as sheep among wolves. Jesus' words came true in the life of the apostles, and they're still coming true today in the lives of his followers around the world. Join host Todd Nettleton as we hear their inspiring stories and learn how we can help right now on The Voice of the Martyrs Radio Network. Welcome again to The Voice of the Martyrs Radio. My name is Todd Nettleton. We talked several weeks back about my brand new book, When Faith is Forbidden, 40 Days on the Front Lines with Persecuted Christians. One of the stories in that book is about my visit to Hong Kong in 2015 to interview John and Karen Short. It's day 13 in the book. If you already have a copy in 2014, John was detained while on a visit to North Korea. He left some printed gospel materials outside a Buddhist shrine that was one stop on his tour, and the tracks were discovered, and John was detained. After his eventual release, John only gave interviews to two media outlets. One was his hometown newspaper back in Australia, and the other was Voice of the Martyrs Radio. We aired that interview in 2016. One of the things that I did working on the book was to go back and listen to some of the interviews with Christians that I write about in the book or to read the interview transcripts again. And one of those that I listened to again was my conversation with John's wife, Karen Short. While John was being held inside North Korea without any chance to call or communicate with Karen or or really to notify anyone, She was at their home and the Christian bookstore that they run in Hong Kong. She had to deal with media inquiries from all over the world, with concerned Christians and supporters writing and asking about John, and even with a North Korean spy sent to check up on what John was saying during his interrogations inside North Korea. And through it all, she had such a calm assurance of God's presence and God's ultimate control. We first aired this conversation five years ago, but I know that we have a lot of new radio stations, a lot of new VOM Radio podcast subscribers since 2016. So I wanted to share again this conversation with Karen Short. I know it's going to be a blessing to you. And if you want to hear John's side of the story, and I hope you do, you can Simply go to vomradio.net slash short. Again, vomradio.net slash short to hear John tell his side of the story of being detained inside North Korea. Now here's my conversation with Karen Short. When I first heard and got it clearly, I thought, ah, the Lord is in this. I knew the Lord was in control. I didn't have a fear for him, only as I said that he'd be able to have his Bible and then he would be, he would be fine. fine. (laughs) He would be able to read, he'd be able to get food for his own soul in whatever situation. I never thought about brutality or how he would be treated. I didn't go to the what if situation in my imagination at all. I just simply trusted the Lord in it and it was God's will. Was there a low point that that you kind of felt Oh, I'm not sure I can keep going. No. None at all. No. That's amazing. No. God is faithful. Yeah, absolutely. And to God be the glory in this. It's not in me. It's what God works in you. His Holy Spirit, hopefully, 
And I always believe that when the Lord uses you and the, the fruits of the Spirit work out, I don't think you're aware of it. You're willing, but you're not aware otherwise. We're so quickly to be so proud and self-centered. So It's one of those things you kind of see looking back. You see, oh, yeah, okay, I can see that now. Yes. At the time, like you say, you're just you're trying to do what the Lord wants you to do, and you go keep going. It was an intense time, but then we naturally we get up very early. We always have, and to be quiet with the Lord and read, and there was always a word, a timely word, just sit still. I held on to that, and my request for John, only one thing I asked really, was that he would be able to keep his Bible. And I thought, if he's got the Word of God with him, he'll be fine if he can read his, the Scriptures. And thankfully, God answered that prayer. On each occasion of entry into North Korea, I make a point of putting my Bible on the top of my possessions. The North Korean says, what's that? And I say, that's a Bible, that's my Bible. You can't take that into North Korea. I say, well then, if I can't take that in, I don't go in because I'm a Christian. I read my Bible every day. I need this with me. Then they will say, now it will be recorded. You must bring this out again. For that reason, I thank God, I was then able to keep it in my possession, even when detained for, for the entire time. A daily habit, we read a, cha a certain chapter of certain books every day, plus other things. So I thought if he had the scriptures, he would be, we'd be on the same page. She knew what I would be reading each day of the month. On the ninth day, I would be reading the ninth chapter of Proverbs. We read through the Proverbs. She knew I'd be reading that on that day. She knew that I would be reading John's Gospel. Apart from whatever else we read, we read through John's Gospel every month. She knew I'd be reading the ninth chapter. I knew she'd be reading that, as I've done previously. When apprehended by the, by the Chinese government, I will sit there quietly and read through Romans. Read it, read it, read it again and again. You're reading the same things. How did that, what was the effect of that? That were really one in heart. And we would be appreciating, probably in more depth than ever before, what we were reading. And it was so practical and so encouraging. Then we would be united in prayer at the throne of grace and you, uh, total confidence in the Lord. And I knew he was a light in a dark place. The outcome we may never know. Uh, the man that investigated him that was so brutally anti-God I mean, he may be in heaven. I mean, the Lord knows the details. We do what he wants us to do, and we're finite. So his ultimate purpose, we, we just leave it in his hands. Were any of the reporters openly hostile to the gospel or the missionary work or... You know, what was your husband doing? Is he some kind of wild adventure seeker? Is he crazy? Is he a troublemaker? Why was he even having gospel tracts in North Korea? Did any of them approach it from that angle, or were most of them understanding and and somewhat sympathetic? Most most were very much positive and quite intrigued, uh, I, I guess. And it was I had a wonderful opportunity because everyone that came into the book room, they the track that John had handed out in Korean. Everyone got one in English, Korean and Chinese. Every photographer, every re journalist, everyone got them. So I was thankful for that. And he mentioned, as I talked to him, they also put it on national TV in North Korea. So everyone there got to at least see the cover and say, hey, I'd like to know what that says, that this guy got arrested. So, exactly. so even as you're going through this, you could see that, that God was doing some things. Oh. Absolutely. And it was so many varied and different persons. I found in Hong Kong, whether whoever, whichever news agency it was, they were very decent. The more cynical perhaps would have been what our sons face when they read blogs in Australia. 50-50, he's a psycho. What would anyone do that for? My brother's boss said, have you heard about that idiot that went to North Korea? Why would you go there? <laughs> 
And so my brother's sitting there and he said, oh, actually, that idiot is married to my sister. <laughs> so he had a great opportunity for the Lord, but I found in the main, I didn't have any hostility. There was one reporter, perhaps, I would have said that was lent towards North Korea and reported accordingly, but I told her that. I would not give her any further information because what you've printed is not correct. And it turns out, as we heard from John, that was a reporter that was at least apparently acting at the behest of the North Koreans to come and see the book room and see if everything he was saying was the truth. Yes. So it turns out later you were very wise that, that she wasn't trustworthy. No, and she was very forward of all, all that came through, and there were probably hundreds of different ones. But she came into the office. I found her going through my photographs. She was photographing. I said, would you please delete that? It was, it was quite sensitive of meetings in country areas in northern China. This week on Voice of the Martyrs Radio, we are revisiting one of the most powerful conversations we have ever had, a conversation with Karen Short about the weeks that her husband was detained inside North Korea. When he was detained, you get the call, then it becomes public. This whole time, though, you never felt fearful. Not, not at all. The Lord's people were supporting me in prayer, and the words of encouragement that I received, whether it was text messages, emails, the phone calls, were tremendously uplifting. The whole of our young people in Germany are affected by this because we know you personally and it means something. And the letters from children in all over the states, I mean, it was precious because the sweet little children, I know the Lord hears their every prayer and I truly, not a moment of doubt, whatever. God is still on the throne. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't really know what's going on. We don't understand all this, but God is still on the throne. And that just came through so clearly. And I sort of understand that because I've, you know, doing this work and because I believe in God. I wonder how the secular reporters responded to that because they don't understand it. <laughs> They're like, wait a minute, your husband has been captured in North Korea. You're supposed to be a basket case. But you had this just calm sense of assurance. Did any of them comment on that or ask about that or, or just respond in a way that said, wow, this is really amazing? Several did say, well, what are your demands? What do you want from the North Korean government? And I said, nothing. I don't expect anything from any government. We're Australian, we're privileged. I thank God for our Australian privileges. But I didn't expect the government to do anything because it was beyond government. He was in God's hands, not the hands of men. I went to the Australian consulate here in Hong Kong and they interviewed me at length after John had been detained for about 10 days, I think it was. They were very reasonable and asked questions because it was a first. They were totally at a loss. They had to scramble to find American help and uh, Swedish help, the Swedish embassy that actually was a help. But it was beyond all of the uh, officialdom. But I, it was wonderful. I, again, I could give the gospel tracts to every one of these officials, and I knew they weren't for God. But they said, well, aren't you upset? Don't you miss him? Don't you love your husband? I said, that's a given. But God is first in our lives, and he is there for God's purpose. And I believe that with all my heart, and I certainly knew John did. And different people came to me with it and said, well, but what about this? And what about that? And what about that's got to be done in the book room? And uh, what if he doesn't come back? I said... Please don't talk like that. I don't think like that. We're in today and we're, we're praying for the men that are guarding him, whatever his situation is for now, for today. And we're very thankful. How did you find out that event that he was going to be released or, or what happened that let you know my husband's coming home? I got a phone call. I was reading. Uh, it was about seven in the morning and a reporter, I think he was CNN reporter, rang me. Have you heard the news? I said, what news? That your husband's been released. I said, no, I haven't. 
And he was the head of the Australian consulate who, Canberra rang me probably two hours later and said, We've, it's a possibility, because they couldn't, they didn't know for sure, but North Korea had actually let the news out to South Korea and then it would have gone journalist media-wide. When were you able to actually speak to John and hear his side of the story? It was probably, the flight was 9 a.m., from Pyongyang, landed in Beijing at 10. I think it was probably about nearly midday and I received a phone call and all the journalists said, as soon as he rings, we want to be there and take your photograph. I said, no. So then he rang and he was really emotional and with what he'd seen on his arrival, because again, from his perspective, he had no idea of the media floodgate that was there waiting for him. So first shock was that when the plane landed, there at the exit of the plane was a representative of the Australian government. He said, I think you need to prepare yourself. I said, what for? He said, there are a, a bevy of photographers, CNN and BBC are all here. I said, really? I was not ready for this. As I told my family later, I was very vulnerable. I had not shed a tear at this point, but then suddenly when the door opened and this this cavalcade of photographers and people shouting and, will you make a statement, Mr. Short? It was just too much for me. It was uh, an emotional uh, overcoming. We're talking with Karen Short about the time her husband, John, was detained inside North Korea, the so-called Hermit Kingdom. They wanted me to say, what do you feel? What are your emotions? And I said, very thankful. Thank God, thank God, thank God, is all I would say, which is what I really felt. Another thing we both often do is we fast. So I didn't eat for 15 days, and I think that gave me the clear focus as well. And John hadn't, he'd declined from eating for for he told them he wasn't hungry (laughs) that's it that's it he didn't want to offend anybody but and that helped so he said I think it's good if you come up and meet me up here the next day I I think we got straight away got flights straight up with two local sisters I said come with these two very special uh close sisters how did God minister to you during this during the time he was held How did you experience God in maybe a new way or a different way than you would on a normal day? Focus and priority. Everything that was not of necessity falls away. I mean, you are totally focused on the main point, and that was praying for John, being spiritually calm and quiet to deal with all the demands and of coming from every area of every form of communication and I I just knew I needed to be quiet before the Lord that I couldn't be scattered uh, even for our own sons they all wanted to come I said no you can't do anything where you are pray and be quiet be, for dad and he's in the Lord's hands. You all know that. And, our, of course, our workers here are amazing. They came and said, anything you need, they came with funds and anything, so you, you don't have to be concerned about anything. And they were careful that, well, they didn't ever say, they know not to say to me, what if, because it's not in our dictionary at all. So what is in your dictionary in place of what if? It's not ever been a part of it, but I say the Lord's will. And the verse, when we were married, it was not my will, but thine be done. And it's the best. It's absolutely the best to trust God with all your heart, to do what he wants you to do. It's not a mystery. Where you are today is where God wants you to be, unless he puts it in your heart to go out The Lord knows, but if you're willing to be willing, you will know what to do because his will is perfect. Is there anything about your experience with John being detained in North Korea where you look back and say, I wish I would have done this a little bit differently? 
I would go with him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, why? Because I believe that what he's doing is what God wants him to do. And if the Lord wants me to, to go with him and be part of it, I would go. But mostly I support him from here because there's the responsibilities of the ministry, the literature ministry here. But I would love to go to see uh, in real time the situation there. But should it be the Lord's will, I, ha I don't have any problem with that. Bar very few people, one or two, you're not going back there again, are you, John? Well, I'm praying about it. You're not serious. Yeah, I am. <laughs> yes, we talked about that too. And I was I was not one of the one or two who just said, oh, yeah, okay. It's like, why would you do that? But you've given him to the Lord a long time ago. And so it's a natural part of your life and your ministry to say, absolutely, go. Yes, it is. Was that sort of part of the deal when you got married? I mean, he was already involved in ministry. He was already doing that. So you understood that from day one. Uh, this is a guy who's going to do ministry, and I need to, I want to be a part of that. That's right. And he said before we were married, as I said to you, the Lord is first. It was a, a learning curve, but I could see the kind of man that he, he is, generous, open, and I had to learn that. And when I saw, oh, Lord, I don't ever want to hinder this. I need an enlarged heart to be all that I can to help him in whatever he does, that I always only want to ever be a help, not a hindrance. So what would your advice be to those who are thinking about getting married, uh, perhaps even to a, a minister or a missionary or someone that God has called uh, because you you came into that situation, would you would there be some advice that you would pass on to them? When I left Australia and my father, it was totally, I believe, spiritual in the advice he gave me. He said, "Stay near the Lord, read the Word of God for your life, and you'll overcome in whatever situation you're in." that you're willing to be willing, I believe, and you've got to have an anchor and a foundation, that it's God first. It's not your infatuation with each other or love. Love is wonderful, but I believe respecting each other is absolutely vital, that you esteem each other. You want the best for each other, and whatever, whatever it takes that you're willing to do whatever it takes. And it's not about you. A wife is to help, from my perspective. And I'm totally free in that and totally in, in the enjoyment of that. John knows what he's doing. I just do what I can to help and follow. To me, this it takes all the, the strain out of anything. That's Karen Short in an interview that I recorded with her in Hong Kong. The marriage advice that she received held up very well when her husband John was detained and questioned for 15 days inside North Korea. It's not just good advice for wives who are about to head to the mission field. It's applicable for all of us. The stories that we share here on Voice of the Martyrs Radio have practical implications for all of our lives. When you hear about the challenges that John and Karen Short faced in their marriage when he was detained in North Korea, it helps all of us gain perspective on the challenges we may be facing in our own homes. When you hear about someone like John Short willing to go to prison to share his faith in North Korea, it challenges us to share our faith wherever we live. You know, you can hear more stories like this every week here on Voice of the Martyrs Radio, Check us out online at vomradio.net. You may also want to subscribe to the VOM Radio podcast or sign up for Voice of the Martyrs' free monthly newsletter where we share these stories in print form. Please come back and join us next week here on the Voice of the Martyrs radio network.